How's it going, movie fans? My name is Jonathan. I am a man of movies. I love film and everything that has to do about it, and I'm just here for you to listen to my take. Now, 2021 is going to be a huge year for film if everything does go well, because in 2020, a lot of films were supposed to be coming out, and they got pushed to this year because of everything happening. So here are my top 10 most excited films for 2021. Now coming in at number 10 is Black Widow. Honestly, about a year ago, I wasn't really too excited about the movie because I didn't think we needed a Black Widow movie. She's a good character and all, but she was always that side character in the Avengers movies or whatever other movie she was in. But you give us some time, you dangle it in front of us, and I'm just wanting that film, especially because it's gonna be the first film in Marvel Phase 4. My number nine is A Quiet Place Part 2. John Krasinski directed A Quiet Place Part 1, and he's gonna be directing this one. He is gonna be up there for me as a great horror type of director if he hits it out of the park with this one. The first one, was such a great blend of horror and thriller mixed in with an original concept done expertly. I am excited to see what's in store for the second installment starring Emily Blunt. My number eight is No Time to Die. I love the way that Craig is so suave with all of his mannerisms in Bond. Uh, the action is one of a kind. Every time you mention action, people usually compare it to Bond films, so that alone. And the score, Bond's score in his movies and the songs in the films are so original. But, is this going to be the final Bond film? I don't think so. In this world, I should say, there's some talks going around that there might be some spin-off characters from No Time to Die that may be getting their own film. So are we gonna be staying in this world for a little bit? And are we gonna stop uh, replacing the Bond actors like we did back in the day? We'll have to see. Raya and the Last Dragon is my number seven. Listen, animation is one of my favorite art forms in filmmaking, so that alone was gonna put it on my list already. But aside from that, I don't know much about the story. What does it mean, this whole Last Dragon thing? And I think there is a trailer out there, and I did see it. What I got from it wasn't really the story behind the movie, but what the movie's gonna come and bring to us. In the vein of a Moana, it seems to be very adventurous. And if Moana was adventurous enough for you, from the trailers alone, this looks like it's gonna outdo Moana on that level. And the visuals, Year after year after year, whether it be Pixar or Walt Disney Animation, the visuals will always get better, and it looks so good in this movie. Dune comes in as my number six, aside from the fact that one of the greatest directors of modern times, Denis Villeneuve, is going to be directing the movie. It looks like a huge blockbuster type of film, and what I'm hearing about the concept, the people that have read the source material, have seen the other movies, this has a potential of being a huge blockbuster award-worthy movie. I'm thinking Lord of the Rings, people. I'm thinking about original Star Wars, people. The trailers look so grand, so epic. A-list casting all around. There's little room for it to go wrong. Coming in at the halfway mark for me is Luca. No matter if I come out of it amazed or if I come out of the movie semi-disappointed, Pixar has a way of instilling emotion, instilling adventure, instilling great expert filmmaking into all of their films. Doesn't matter if it's animated. That's why it's one of my favorite film studios. So Luca comes out and not only is it going to change the type of Pixar animation, which I'm excited for, I want to see Pixar dive into more risky filmmaking slash animation. The story of two friends that may hide the secret of being like mer people or, or fish people in Italy, no less. No matter if I come out of the movie disappointed, Pixar, you always got a place on this list, man. The ninth installment into the Fast and Furious franchise is coming out this year. And I, 
actually have a bit of a complicated history with the series because when I was a kid, I never had interest in it. And as a teenager, I actually hated it even more. I was never a guy that was into cars, even now. I, I don't like cars. And I kind of made fun of people that would go opening day and watch a Fast and Furious movie because I thought they were kind of stupid and cheesy. And they, they hooked me in, man. They, they hooked me in, let me tell you. There is a lot of cheese. There's a lot of unbelievable action. But the story of Don Toretto and his family, his friends, and their missions that they go on in every single film and how each movie builds on top of each other, making a huge type of cinematic universe, if you will, like, like Marvel. I, I love the way that they interconnect. The action, though cheesy and unreal, is so fun. Though it's my number four, it's my number one on the films that I know I'm gonna have the most fun with this year. Starting off my top three, Justice League is coming on HBO Max and it's gonna be the Snyder Cut. Zack Snyder was the original director of Justice League a couple of years ago, but after some personal issues, Joss Whedon stepped in and finished the movie off, and it became one of the most divisive DCEU movies out there, aside from even Wonder Woman 1984. I didn't care too much about it, but to have a director see his vision out through and through, 100%, and knowing that this film might not even be a film, it might even be a miniseries, we're not even 100% sure anymore, but we're getting about a four hour Snyder Cut Justice League film. We're gonna explore the characters more, the uh, story of Apocalypse coming and wreaking havoc. I'm so curious how that's gonna play off with Zack Snyder at the helm once again. Halloween Kills. It was actually one of the movies last year that I was so mad didn't make its release date. This is a film that I talked to my friends about, I talked to my wife about, I was so excited to see this movie come Halloween time, and then it couldn't reach the release date, but it's gonna come out this year. The original Halloween is one of my favorite horror movies out there. I know nowadays, especially, a lot of people are divided on the original Halloween. I actually love it. It was the first movie that I couldn't watch as a kid, and I actually ended up watching the original Halloween when I was like 19 or 20 years old, that's the scar that Halloween left me. And so when 2018's Halloween came out saying this is a sequel, this is the true sequel to Halloween, all those cheesier sequels that came out after, that's in like a different universe, this is the real sequel. And I love the way that they evolved Jamie Lee Curtis's character, they made Michael's motives more sinister and more horrific and now we're getting Halloween kills. The trailer alone with the fire trucks going to the house that's burning, with Michael burning in the house, I was already going, oh my God, I can't wait for this movie to come out in a couple of months. The film that I am most excited to watch in 2021 is the MCU Spider-Man 3. I actually touch on this in my Marvel Most Anticipated list. And just in case I don't hit some of the points I hit in that video, check that one out. But I'm curious why this film is so shrouded in mystery. Why we haven't gotten a title yet. I don't remember Homecoming or Far From Home being so mysterious. But it has to be the rumors that are circulating this production. The rumors that Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire might come in as their Spider-Man in this movie. That other villains like uh, Doc Ock from Spider-Man 2 Jamie Foxx's Electro are supposed to be coming in the potential of a Spider-Verse, a multiverse, if you will, in the MCU is what I am so excited for because Spider-Man is my favorite superhero. I've resonated with him since I was a small boy and I still do to this day. And what is this film gonna bring about that will change the Tom Holland Spider-Man character and the MCU as it is? But that's just my list, that's just my opinion. Comment below, what are some of the films that you are most excited for? What's some of the films even on my list that surprised you? I'd love to know, let's chat it down below.
But like always, like this video, share this video with family and friends, and subscribe to my channel. Till next time, movie fans.